Folks, uh, big news. This just in. Uh, hours ago, when we did this show, I mean, uh, after explosive revelations of criticism of the president in the book Fire and Fury, Steve Bannon has been forced to step down from his post as executive chairman of Breitbart News. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Bannon, seen here in happier days? <laughs> has now lost his high White House position, his billionaire benefactor, his base, and now his job. It just proves what I've always said. Criticizing Donald Trump is not good for your career. Meanwhile, it's day two of the Oprah 2020 campaign. <laughs> when will she choose a running mate? Does she even need to run? Or does she just say the White House is one of her favorite things and move in? <laughs> Everyone wants to know what Oprah's thinking. And we got an inside scoop today from Oprah's bestie and my three-legged race partner at the CBS company, Picnic, Gail King. <laughs> Here she is talking about an Oprah presidential bid on CBS This Morning This Morning. Gail has even said she would bet her firstborn child that Oprah would never run. So, Gail, stop talking, Jan. <laughs> Just stop it, Jan. Uh oh, Gail, looks like your son belongs to Jan now. <laughs> Everybody knows CBS works on the Rumple Stiltskin rules. <laughs> so, Gail doesn't say Oprah was running, but she didn't say Oprah wasn't not thinking about not maybe yes running or something. I absolutely don't think that. Her position has changed. I don't. You know, I was up talking to her very late last night. I do think she's intrigued by the idea. She loves this country and would like to be of service in some way. But I don't think that she is actively considering it. For the record, that is a I don't that, think she's actively change. considering it this time. I'm not trying to be cute here or be uh, mysterious, but I do think it's a very intriguing thing that she had never considered. No matter what happens, I will be at CBS this morning. That's not what you said earlier. <laughs> Work in it, Nora. <laughs> Do you want to be friends with Oprah's chief of staff or not? <laughs> I can't believe Nora O'Donnell violated Gail's trust like that. I just want to say, Gail, I would never betray you that way. That's not what you said earlier. <laughs> Put a cork in it, John. I... No. Oh. Of course. All of this talk about Oprah was sparked by her stirring speech at the Golden Globes on Sunday, after which she got a wave of support on Twitter, including from first daughter and robot greeter at a Japanese airport, Ivanka Trump. <laughs> Last night, Ivanka tweeted, just saw Oprah's empowering and inspiring speech at last night's hashtag Golden Globes. Let's all come together, women and men, and say hashtag time's up, hashtag united. And don't forget to pick up your rose gold Time's Up bracelet at IvankaTrump.com. Promo code, you go, girl. <laughs> now, some of that. We made up some of that. Did we make up any of that? A little bit. We made up a little bit of that. Yeah, you get a little of the rose gold. Now, Ivanka did not get around to tweeting this until the night after the Golden Globes. It's natural. I mean, she's too busy to live tweet TV while it's happening. I mean, she's not the president. <laughs> and... Ivanka's tweeting of support of someone who would run against her own father. It's the most surprising endorsement since Churchill. We shall fight on the beaches. We shall fight on the landing grounds. But one thing you can't beat is German engineering. Buy Mercedes-Benz. Now, one person, one person, Gary Oldman's so good in that. Yeah. One person who has no doubts about how Donald Trump would do against Oprah is Donald Trump. Yeah, Vito. Yeah, Oprah would be a lot of fun. Yeah, it'd be fun watching two billionaire TV stars wrestle for control of our nuclear arsenal. <laughs> you know, fun. <laughs> we'll be right back. Wow, what a cliffhanger! What's going to happen in the next Late Show video? Click subscribe to find out. <laughs>